Hi Greedy 3Ders, welcome to today's episode. I'm going to be making the Vulture today, the notorious Spider-Man bad guy. This sculpture has been created by Epic Prop and I'll put a link in the description to where you can find out all about them. There'll be a little bit more about them in the video but they've created this amazing sculpture, part of the Sinister Six collection and I'll be doing a few more from the Sinister Six but we're going to be starting off today with Mr Toombs here, the Vulture. Stay tuned. <music> I've printed the base in PLA high speed from JamJ on my Creality K1 and it's done a fantastic job. Now there's a fair bit of PLA left on the supports but that's what happens in PLA printing when you support stuff but look at the quality of this base. It is beautiful. There's loads of detail. It's come out perfectly. I really am chuffed and it's so easy to print in PLA. Now I'm giving everything a priming coat of Chaos Black. This is a fantastic primer. It's not the cheapest primer in the world but my word it does a great job and it dries really really quickly so I'm covering everything in that. I've not just done it in PLA, I've printed the majority of the Vulture himself on my Uniformation GK2 using some Jam J High Speed Plus and this is the model all put together and I'm going to glue them together now. I've done a bit of a test fit first to make sure everything goes together. I've done a tiny bit of sanding and uh, everything went together beautifully. It is a credit to the designer. This Vulture model is beautiful. It's highly detailed. It's absolutely fantastic. It's gone together wonderfully and I'm just using a little bit of super glue with some activator to get it all together. And as you can see, there is all Vulture all ready to go. I think it's worth saying a little bit about Epic Prop who designed this. You can join their Patreon, but they've got their own little website where you can buy the files from directly as well. But if you join the Patreon, you get some great freebies in the first month. Now we're doing Vulture here, and you'll also get a 50% discount if you join one of their highest tiers for you. And look at the detail and the quality of this piece. Check out Epic Props. There'll be a link in the description where you can look at their Patreon and have a little look at their website, but highly recommended. So moving back to the painting, I'm going to take some green skin for the base of old vulture and i'm going to pop it in my airbrush and i'm going to blast him all the way across now i don't mind a little bit of the black poking through that just adds to the shadow but i want to give him on the whole a coat of this green skin all across and that's what he looks like when he's had his splattering of green but oh no we're not going to stop there we're going to go to a little bit of gorse green this is one of the air sets from the mega set from the army paint and it's a real fluorescent color and wow it's going to set the vulture off beautifully now i'm not going to paint the whole lot of him all over of course i'm not i'm just going to paint some highlighted areas and i'm going to touch up some of the places where his muscles would be sticking out i don't want to make him look fluorescent i just want to give him a little bit of variation and a little bit of change in the colour of his costume and this colour is awesome for the old vulture. And there we go, that's what he looks like with the higher coat on. We put a higher coat on, we need to do a little bit of shading. So I'm using some Orc Flesh, which is a Citadel contrast colour. And in exactly the opposite way as using the high colour, I'm going to go from below up and I'm going to paint it in the areas where the light would naturally be darker and shadows would gather under his armpits, on his back, the small of his back, etc. And that is the fairly final base layer of the Vulture. Now it's got the shaded in and the highlights and I'm really pleased how that's come out. Now I've got some Molten Orange here and I'm going to use this to do the brick work on the base. I love Molten Orange for the bricks and all I'm going to do is really carefully I'm going to spray it across each brick. I don't want it to go over the whole thing. I just want to get the brick work to look orange. It's not going to be the last thing I do with it but this for me is the colour of bricks and we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing on it later but let's get that base layer on first. Barbarian Flesh is the colour that I'm going to use for Old Vulture's head and I'm going to go straight over that primed black with it. Now I don't mind a little bit of the black again coming through, especially on his head because it's going to look a little bit like stubble and you'll see that later. So, you know, don't be afraid of leaving a little bit of the dark coming through and I'm going to give his hands exactly the same flesh colour all the way across. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this up just a little bit to the Wildling Flesh, which is the high tone of the triad colour for the Army Painter flesh set and I'm just going to go top down and give him the highlighted looks. Now I used to do my skin like this in all my models and I've gone back a little bit to doing this on certain models when they're quite small and that's looking awesome. Back to green skin 
for those wings. These wings look fantastic. I cannot wait to get into the shading of these wings. This is the main part of the vulture. This is the bit that I want to be the main part you see. Taking some feral green, I'm also now just going to highlight those wings. I don't want to go over the whole thing again. I want there to be a gradient of green on these. So you can see me spraying it across the centre there and just making sure that I leave the darker colour where it will come off his body and that lighter colour will start to gradient through and that's the way we shade. Just give it a light coat once or twice across. Don't be afraid of it. Get in your airbrush and have a crack. Back to gorse green. I love this colour and I'm going to use this as one of the highlights highlights not the highlight but one of the main highlights for his wings and I'm going across the outer edge of it giving it a really good coat because I really want this colour to pop and stick out and oh, that gradient is looking lovely I'm so so pleased with it let's go up another gradient now let's get another colour on there something a little bit more shiny and pizzazzy this gorse green is wonderful but let's just make it pop and I'm using this this is tesseract glow from Citadel and this is just going to go down the very edges of his wings I don't want to cover too much in this but I certainly want the outer edge of his wing to look like it's glowing it looks like it's going to glow in the dark and wow that is the gradient of the wings done this is the centerpiece of the vulture of course it is and this is the original vulture from the original spider-man comics I love the sinister six and I'll be doing all of the sinister six moving forward starting off with this one the old vulture and those wings are fantastic I hope you really like these wings that's what they look like give it a bit of a twirl give it a bit of a show really love the gradient really love the shading I'm really chuffed with these wings Okay, sealing it and protecting it with some Crystallium Clear. I don't want all my hard work to be ruined, so get a good layer of that across. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to protect absolutely everything. All those base layers, including the green bits and the skinny bits, I don't want them to be coming off on my fingers when I move on to the painting stage. I'm protecting everything. And there we go. There's the head after it's all been protected. Look, that's the sort of five o'clock shadow you can see on the back. And again, that was absolutely designed and meant for honest. Right, moving on to the uh, washes I'm just going to use a red transparent here from uh, Vallejo and I'm just going to pop that on with a nice thick brush get it all the way across his head giving him a shade of ready pink to give that skin tone a little bit of life a little bit of pizzazz and once it's on take a bit of a kitchen roll and get the majority off we don't want it pooling in any areas we don't want it to be sticking out anywhere and once you've got it all off for me I wanted to give it another coat so I did exactly the same again more red on there and I just banged it on I'm using one of my precision bottles here and I'll put a link where you can get these from these are awesome I just mixed this before and away we went getting the majority of it off again I don't mind a couple of little bits of pulling there's a little bit that pulls under his chin there and, and I don't mind that because I'm going to go over that a little bit later on with the shade so I've got no problems with that at all same again with the hands, exactly the same. It's part of the flesh. There's not much flesh on him. So I want the bits of flesh that are there to look exactly the same. So both hands, exactly the same treatment. Once that's all done, we'll moving on to the base and some brush on primer. And I'm going to use a dry brush technique here to give it a stony kind of look. Get the majority of your paint off a nice thick brush. And once you're happy that the most of that paint's off, you probably only want about 10-15% left on your brush. Go over to your model and just lightly speckle across the outer edges and all across the highlights. And what you'll see is that that grey will sit on the outside, the dark black will stay on the inside and it'll just set that model off beautifully beautifully go over the whole thing with this and you will be amazed at what it looks like dry brushing is easy I highly recommend it it's one of my favorite painting techniques and I pretty much use it on all my models Now just going up and a little octave if you will I'm going to use some stone golem which is a higher grey and I'm just going to put this on a great big makeup brush and I'm literally going to tickle it across the model I don't want this to go all over I just want this to sit on the very outer edges and the sharp jutty out bits to give it that real high definition and you can see straight away the difference that's made while the dry brush is out skeleton bone my favorite army painter color ever I'm going to be using on the bricks and I've just 
just going to put it on a dry brush and I'm going to dry brush this around the edges of the bricks to give them that worn battered look and that orange and the dry brush of skeleton bone is fantastic for brick colour chuffed again with how they're coming out give them a coat all the way across on the edges Now Streak and Grime from AK, this is fantastic stuff. This makes it just look aged and battered and I'm popping it in the lid because I don't need too much of this on a nice big brush and I'm just going to splodge it on there. I'm going to splatter it on and rub it in really well and it gives it that kind of grimy, it's been there for years look, that dirty look, that unkempt, unloved look and that is exactly what I want for the base. There's a couple of ways you can put this on. I like to use a big brush to splodge it on, not everywhere but just on some of the highlighted areas and then take a really narrow thin brush and just pull it down so it makes it look like there's a few drips, a few runs. And if you think that that's a little bit too thick, if you feel that you've gone over it a little bit too much, just take that big brush again and just smooth it out, just feather it out and so you can't see it as much. And it's as simple as that to get that grime look all over it. This stuff is amazing. Link will be in the description. Soft Tone from Army Paints, a fantastic wash. Again, one of my favourite washes. And I'm just going to wash this all across the brickwork. I want them to look dirty. I want them to look like they've been out in the elements. And this will do the trick wonderfully. And there's the vulture's face after he's red. So we want to give him now a contrast of yellow. So exactly the same. I'm just using the Vallejo transparent yellow. And I'm doing a wash on him exactly the same as I did the red. I'm of course going to get it on. I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to do exactly the same to both his hands as well. And that is now what he looks like with a little bit of colour in his cheeks and the base colours on. But taking some of this fairy flesh from the uh, Vallejo colour. I'm just going to dry brush this across. And this will just give another variation to his face. And with the lighter colour that this is the slightly pinky color that it is on top of the base colors on top of your washes gives us the look that i'm after it's only a really tiny model detailing that is fine i'm going to use a little bit of brown now some brown sand paint and i'm going to use one of these hard electric brush heads and i'm just going to pop a little bit on the edge and i'm going to flick the majority off onto some tissue and then i'm going to flick it across his head old vulture's an old guy he's got some of those age spots and i want to give him some of those spots and some blemishes across his head and when we have a closer look at him you can see that they're on there beautifully and if you do too much just dry brush over them with that last color you use just to get rid of them to tone them down you can either wipe the majority of them off if you want to with a wet q-tip but that's what he looks like with his eyes on i'm not going to show you how i've done all the face because you've seen me do faces loads of times this is no different nice big fat white eyebrows a little bit of red under the eye black on the eye first followed by white a bit of pink on the lips and a little bit of shade around the edges of his eye and he is done at this scale he will look perfect now for his feathery bit on the top, I'm just using uh, an ivory colour here and I'm going to carefully paint that on. I'm not going to put you through the whole painful process of painting it, but it took me a little bit of time, but voila, there it is. It's on there and that's the ivory on there. We're going to dirty that up a little bit later, but now we're going to move on to a really good bit. This stuff is panel line. It's an ink. It's fabulous. And with the edges where those little grooves are in his uniform, this stuff, if you dollop it on your very thin brush that comes with the panel line accent and just touch the areas you want this stuff just osmosizes that's not even a word but i've just made it up it diffuses through the gap and it's amazing it makes painting things like this so easy you literally just touch it on the bit you want to and it just travels down the gap itself it's amazing took me ages it was a labor of love but oh my god i love the effect on the vulture that this has done it has darkened up the inner bits do not miss out this stage on the vulture it sets the model apart now back to that soft tone and we're going to use this soft tone to dirty up his feathers on his head just splotch it on there splatter it on there rub it out rub it around and give him that dirty look i don't want him to look like he's just come out of a showroom this guy he's going to look battered and that's what he looks like when he's all painted up dirty feathery effect just what i'm after now just to do a little bit of something different at the end once i've glued him all together and i'll show you him in a minute i'm just using some ak snow to go over the base in a couple of areas this will just add a little bit of je ne sais quoi to the final base and that then is this whole model done i think it's about time we had a look at him all done make sure you check out epic prop and uh, i think i hope indeed you like the vulture
it's at this point in the video where I'd just like to say thank you for watching and supporting Greedy 3D. It really, really is appreciated. If you want to know how to support the channel, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Please, please hit that subscribe button. It will take you a second. Just go on, just, just down there. Just that's it. Tap it. Well done. Thank you. That's marvellous. That's the first way you can support us. That doesn't cost you a penny. If you want to join the Greedy 3D Patreon, you can join on a paid tier or you can join on a free tier. Or the description you need will be down below in the description where you can join the Greedy 3D Patreon. If you want to buy anything from the Amazon affiliate links that you'll see in the description too, a little bit will kick back to the channel and just allow me to carry on doing these videos for you guys, which I hope you find informative. So there's the Vulture done, number one of the Sinister Six, and we'll do the rest moving forward. But if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the share, and I'll see you next time on Greedy 3D.